Of course, acid-base equilibria are ionic solutions, so our assumption of the average activity coefficient being equal to 1 is not valid. Recall that in order to calculate the average activity coefficient, we can use the debye huckel limiting law or the Davies equation, depending upon the ionic strength of the solution. If the square root of the ionic strength is below 0.2, then we can use the simpler limiting law. However, if the square root of the ionic strength is larger than 0.2, then we will use the Davies equation, as it offers a better empirical fit to the activity coefficient. All right, so now that we remember that we have a way to quantify the average activity coefficient, let's now recalculate the same problem, taking the average activity coefficient into account. And so we still have the exact same chemical reaction, where we have some acid in solution added to water, which is liquid, is in equilibrium with its conjugate acid or base, an aqueous solution plus hydronium, H3O plus aqueous. And then if we write our ice table, we have the exact same scenario that we had before. We start with 0.1 mole. We have nothing in terms of conjugate base or H3O plus. We're going to subtract X plus X plus X for our products. And so at equilibrium for our acid, we have 0.1 minus X. And then we have X and X for our conjugate base and H3O plus. And in this case, because the water is a liquid, then its activity is going to be one the whole time. What we also found previously was that the X that we had calculated under ideal conditions was 0 0.0095. And so if we go back to our list of things that we needed to accomplish while we were doing the sparingly soluble, which is something we're going to apply here as well, is that the first two steps was to calculate the concentration of ions in an ideal case where we assume that the gamma plus minus is equal to 1. And so we've actually done those two things already with the previous problem. And so we're now actually on to step 3 where we're going to calculate the ionic strength. We're then going to then determine what our gamma plus minus is, our average activity coefficient, and then we're going to then calculate the concentration of the ions given that we have a real solution, meaning that we have calculated our gamma plus minus. And like I said, in the previous problem, we've actually already done these two steps. We know the concentration of ions in the ideal scenario where we assume that gamma plus minus is equal to 1. And so then our next two steps that we're going to do is then calculate the ionic strength and our average activity coefficient so that then we can then redetermine what our ions or our concentration of ions are given that they are in a real solution. So starting first with calculating our ionic strength, that's equal to 1 half times the sum over all the ions of the charge of the ions squared times the molality of the ions divided by the standard molality. And so if I were to write that out, I would have 1 half times, and I would have 1 squared times the concentration of the H3O plus divided by the standard molal concentration. And to that I'm going to add minus 1 squared times the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the standard mole concentration. And so when I substitute in numbers, I get 1 half times 1 times 0 0.0095 divided by 1 plus 1 times 0 0.0095 divided by 1. And so in the end, when I do this calculation, I'm going to get I is equal to 0 0.0095. And so what we can see here is that this, the square root of this number is going to be less than 0 0.2, and so that means then we can use then the debye huckel limiting law. Using the debye huckel limiting law to calculate our average activity coefficient means that my log of my average activity coefficient is equal to negative 0 0.509 times the charge of the positive ion times the charge of the negative ion. Um, or at least I'm going to take the magnitude of that product, and that is going to be multiplied the square root of the ionic strength. So that means then the, nat or the logarithm of the average activity coefficient is equal to negative 0 0.509, and that's going to be times 1 times negative 1. I'm going to take the magnitude of that product, and then I'm going to take the square root of 0 0.0095. And when I do that multiplication, then I'm going to get the log of the average activity coefficient is equal to negative 0.0496 which means that my average activity coefficient is equal to 10 raised to the power of negative 0.0496, and that's going to be equal to 0.892. All right, so then we've now calculated our 
um, ionic strength. We've calculated our average activity coefficient, so our last step now is just to calculate what is the concentration of ions in this real solution. And so to do that, we just go back to our equilibrium expression. The equilibrium constant Ka is equal to the activity of the conjugate base A minus times the activity of hydronium divided by the activity of my acid. And in this case, I'm going to use the um, successive approximations method to calculate x, which is why I've labeled this as number 1, because I'm going to do this a couple of times. But substituting in numbers, I've got 1 times 10 to the minus 3, and that's equal to gamma plus minus times x. I'm going to have, again, gamma plus minus times x for the activity of hydronium, and then that's going to be divided by 0 0.1 minus x, since none of these values have changed. The only thing that's now changed is that I actually have a value for this gamma plus minus now, which we just determined a second ago, which was this 8.892. So, substituting in those numbers, what I'm going to get is 1 times 10 to the minus 3, I'm going to use my small value approximation, so that means my x is then going to be very little compared to 0.1, and so then I'm going to then multiply both sides by 0.1, and what that's equal to is gamma plus minus times x, and this value is all squared. So if I take the square root of both sides, then what I'm left with is 0 0.01 is equal to 0 0.892 times x, which leaves me an x being equal to 0 0.0112. I'm now going to do this a second time to test to see if I get the same number over again. So I get Ka is equal to the activity of my conjugate base times my activity of H3O plus divided by my activity of my acid. 1 times 10 to the minus 3 is equal to my gamma plus minus x all squared. And my denominator in this time, and now I can actually plug in my x from my last time, so 0 0.1 minus 0 0.0112. That gives me then, on my left-hand side, if I multiply both sides by this denominator, 1 times 10 to the minus 3 times 0 0.0888, when I do that subtraction, and that's equal to 0 0.892 times x, all squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. What I'm left with is 9.423 times 10 to the minus 3 being equal to 0 0.892 times x. And so when I solve for x, what I'm left with is 0 0.0106. And so because these two numbers are not the same, then that means that I have to do a third step or a third successive um, approximation. Again, I have my acid coefficient and that's equal to or my activity coefficient, I should say, and that's equal to my activity of my conjugate base, activity of hydronium divided by my activity of my acid, 1 times 10 to the minus 3, that's equal to gamma plus minus x all squared, divided by 0 0.1 minus 0 0.0106. On my left-hand side, I have 1 times 10 to the minus 3, and that's going to be multiplied by 0 0.0894, and that's equal to 0 0.892 times x, and this value is all squared, so if I take the square root of both sides, I'm left with 9.455 times 10 to the minus 3, and that's equal to 0 0.892 times x, and if I solve for x, the one I'm left with is 0 0.0106. And so now, because these two values are the same, then that means that I can stop this, this process and I can say that my x is equal to 0 0.0106.